Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. For today, I'd like to talk about another undead archetype that you can take from the Book of the Dead. So if you like what you see, like, subscribe, ding the bell, and let's get into the vampire. So to become a vampire, you need to take the vampire dedication. In order to take this dedication, you must have been killed by a vampire drinking your blood. You gain the vampire and undead traits, as well as the basic undead benefits, which I covered in my Ghosts and Ghouls video. Your undead hunger is for the blood of the living. You gain a Fang's unarmed attack that deals 1d6 piercing damage and has the grapple and unarmed traits. Additionally, you gain the vampire vulnerabilities and the drink blood ability. As a vampire, you cannot voluntarily come within 10 feet of brandished garlic or the religious symbol of a non-evil deity. In order to brandish such an item, the creature must bend one interact action. Doing so brandishes the item for one round. If you involuntarily come within 10 feet of these items, you gain the fleeing condition running until you're at least 10 feet away from the item. After one round of being exposed to one of these items, you can attempt a DC 25 will save as a single action which has the concentrate trait. Success means you overcome your revulsions for 1d6 rounds, or one hour on a critical success. You also gain vulnerability to sunlight. If you are exposed to direct sunlight, then you are immediately slowed 1. The slowed value increases by 1 every time you end your turn in direct sunlight. If you lose all your actions this way, then you are destroyed. And of course, as a vampire, you don't cast shadows or see yourself in mirrors. Finally, in order to use the Drink Blood ability, a grabbed, paralyzed, restrained, unconscious, or willing creature is within your reach. If the target is grabbed, you must make an athletics check against that creature's fortitude DC. Otherwise, the attempt automatically succeeds. On a success, the target becomes drained 1, and you gain temporary hit points equal to the target's level for 10 minutes. Using this ability on the same target more than once has no effect. This dedication is great if you're a strength-based vampire, or if you can get any of the conditions other than grabbed on the targets. The drink blood ability otherwise isn't really that useful. And if you build your character right, you can actually pretty well avoid the vampire vulnerabilities. Please note that this is a rare archetype, meaning you should talk to your GM before taking this archetype. Starting off at level 4, we've got a pretty simple one. Clinging Climber requires you to be trained in athletics. It gives you a climb speed of 15 feet. That's it. Pretty simple, but can be effective. Especially if you're a ranged character. Next up is Manipulative Charm. This feat requires you to be trained in deception or diplomacy. Against humanoids, you gain a plus one circumstance bonus on deception checks to lie. You also gain this bonus on diplomacy checks to gather information and to make an impression. In addition, you can cast Charm as a divine innate spell once per day, using your class DC or your spell DC, whichever is higher. Doing so requires you to stare into the target's eyes giving the spell the visual traits. At 5th level, and every 2 levels after, the spell heightens by 1 level, to a maximum of a 9th level charm when you are 19th level. Actually, I believe this is the first time I've ever seen an innate 1st level spell heighten as you level up. Sure, cantrips always do, but 1st level spells, no. They generally stay at the same level you get them at, and it's usually the first spell level you can cast them at. But this one? Yeah, this one goes up as you level up. I love this feat for out of combat. Then, you must be trained in nature to take Nocturnal Kindred. You can ask questions of, receive answers from, and use diplomacy on bats, rats, and wolves. You also gain a plus one circumstance bonus to make an impression on such animals. In addition, you can also cast Animal Allies as a Divine Innate spell once per day. This uses your Class DC or Spell DC, whichever is higher. You always summon Bats, Rats, and Wolves with this spell. And this is another spell that gets heightened at 5th level 
and every two levels after, up to a maximum of a 9th level animal allies at 19th level. Again, great to have a spell that heightens as you level up, but this one isn't as good. All this one does is damage. And if you've been with the channel for a while, you know how I feel about spells and abilities that just do damage. But for those of you that don't, put simply, I would much rather prefer spells and abilities that debuff the enemy instead of just doing damage. I would prefer spells that do damage and debuff, but if I had to choose between the two, I'd much rather pick debuffing. Then at 6th, we have another pretty simple one. Taking Daywalker gives you the advanced undead benefits. In addition, you can no longer be destroyed by sunlight. However, this does not prevent you from being slowed by exposure to sunlight. So, with this feat, you still want to avoid sunlight to avoid being slowed, but you can't be destroyed by sunlight anymore. So yeah, you're still going to lose an action every time you end your turn in sunlight, but at least you won't be destroyed by that. You might still be destroyed by other things, though. Also at level 6, Predatory Claws gives us a claw unarmed attack that deals 1d4 slashing damage. These claws are in the brawling group and have the agile finesse and unarmed traits. In addition, if you hit with both claw attacks on the same enemy consecutively, then you can attempt to grapple that creature as a free action, provided that you take that action immediately after the second strike. This is the first vampire archetype feat I've seen that's really bad. The claw attacks are fine. The problem is the grapple as a free action. Yeah, it's a grapple attempt for a free action. But the problem is, is that you're making that grapple attempt at a minus 10. The feat says nothing about removing the attack trait or anything like that. You are much better off just trying to grapple the opponent. I get what they were going for here. It's kind of the claw claw bite. But they could have made this so much better. The only level 8 feat for the vampire archetype is Vicious Fangs. Your fangs now deal 1d6 persistent bleed damage on a critical hit. This persistent bleed damage increases to 2d6 at 14th level and 3d6 at 20th level. Honestly, persistent bleed is just more damage. Which is fine, but there are better things you can do for teamwork besides that. Plus it only happens on a critical hit. This is not a good feat for teamwork. At 10th level, bat form is exactly what it sounds like. For one action, you transform into a bat. You gain the effects of a 4th level pest form spell. At 14th level, you can spend 2 actions to instead transform into a bat using a 4th or 5th level aerial form spell. This one is actually pretty good. 4th level pest form can really help you gather information stealthily. In addition, sometimes it's nice to have a big bat that an enemy wants to attack instead of other party members. Also at level 10, we've got Turn to Mist. Another pretty simple one. Once per day, for one action, you can turn to mist, gaining the effects of Gash's form. So essentially, you lose all item bonuses to AC, and you use your proficiency bonus for your unarmored defense. You gain resistance 8 to all physical damage and immunity to precision damage. But you can't cast spells, use items, or use any action with the attack or manipulate traits. You have a fly speed of 10 feet and can slip through tiny cracks. You can dismiss the spell. Honestly, this is a good way to protect yourself from physical damage. You can't really do anything other than move, but you will take way less damage from physical attacks. This is a good way to keep spellcasters up, so that when they dismiss the spell, they can continue casting spells. At level 12, we've got Coffin Bound. This feat is a little complicated, so bear with me. You bind your spirit to a coffin, filling it with the soil of your homeland. If you rest inside your coffin for 10 minutes, you regain hit points equal to your constitution modifier times half your level. You can be healed in other ways during this time, but you're unconscious, so you can't heal yourself. Your GM may allow you to refocus during this time if your class allows you to refocus while you slumber. For example, if you're a sorcerer, if you would be destroyed, you instead remain near death. This doesn't change your dying or wounded value, and you remain unconscious. After one hour, you are destroyed. 
However, if you are returned to your coffin before that hour is up, you avoid destruction. If you then spend one hour resting in your coffin, you regain one hit point and lose the dying and wounded conditions. You can't be healed in any other way when near death. Your coffin can't heal you if you've been staked through the chest. This requires you to be unconscious and it takes three actions. You lose all benefits of this feat if your coffin is destroyed or the soil is lost. You must procure a new coffin and fill it with soil from your homeland in order to restore this feat's function. This feat can essentially make you immortal, but you do have to stay within one hour of your coffin in order for it to do so. Also, since you're unconscious and you can't be healed in other ways, your allies are going to have to bring you back to your coffin, which can end up being a real pain. Although, by the time you take this feat, your party may have access to teleportation magic. This could enable much easier use of this feat. At 14th, we can finally take Mist Escape. This requires Coffin Bound and Turn to Mist. When you are reduced to zero hit points, you can spend a free action to Turn to Mist. Doing so does not expend a use of Turn to Mist, and you can use Mist Escape even if you've already used Turn to Mist that day. You take move actions toward your coffin even though you're unconscious. Because you aren't conscious, you have no control over how you do so. While at 0 HP in this form, you are immune to further damage. You automatically return to your corporal form unconscious if you make it back to your coffin or after one hour when you are destroyed. Whichever of those comes first. So I'm not 100% sure what the ruling on this feat is, but it sounds to me like you just go straight to the near death state and avoid all of the dying wounded stuff. But since you're in Gash's form, they can't stake you through the heart, which means that the coffin bound feat will always work if you can reach there. This feat may make you immune to damage, but there's a lot of caveats to it. But I would only use this feat if you're like wounded four or five and you're going to avoid all the dying stuff anyway. And the last feat for the vampire archetype is Dominating Gaze. This feat requires manipulative charm to take. Once per day, you can cast a 7th level Dominate as a divine innate spell. This uses your class DC or spell DC, whichever is higher. The spell gains the visual traits. At 18th level, the spell is heightened to 8th level. At 20th level, it's heightened to 9th level. A creature that succeeds on its save is immune to your domination for 24 hours. Though in most cases, you can't cast the spell again within 24 hours. If you are destroyed, then all your dominate spells from this feat immediately end. Now that we've gone over the mechanics of the vampire archetype, let's talk about how to use this archetype effectively. There are a couple of ways that I thought of to use this archetype effectively. One is to play an enchantment spellcaster and use the vampire archetype to be a little more martial. Or you could use this archetype for extra spells. Another way is to be a martial class and use this archetype to get a few spells on top of your martial abilities. And finally, the vampire archetype is a good way to augment unarmed attacks. Although, you'll have to rely on other feats to make unarmed attacks good for teamwork. But what do you guys think? Are we rolling up any vampires? Let me know down in the comments. I was going to cover the zombie in this video as well, but I think I'll save that for another video. Remember, teamwork is vital, and I'll see you guys next time.